errors are an important part of any programming language. They allow you to handle unexpected situations and provide useful feedback to the user. First, let's take a look at a built-in error just so we have the basic idea of what they look like. Let's say I try to console log a variable that does not exist. I'll say console log my name. If I save my file, you'll see in the console we have an error. This error is basically saying my name is not defined. And that is true because the variable my name is not defined anywhere in our code. However, let's say we want to throw our own custom errors. To throw an error in JavaScript, you can use the throw keyword followed by new error and open parentheses. Inside these parentheses, you can write a description for your error. Let's say we wanted to throw an error saying something went wrong. Of course, this is not very descriptive and you'd always write detailed errors so the user knows what went wrong. If I save my file and check our console, it's going to say uncaught error, something went wrong. So now we know how to throw our own errors. However, let's say after the error is thrown, I still want my code to do other stuff. Well, if I try to add a console log here, you'll see my code editor kind of darkens it out. It's because once you throw an error, you cannot execute any code under its own level or what we call scope. The throw statement basically ends our JavaScript code process. To handle this error so our code can continue with other stuff, we can use the try, catch, and finally blocks. Let's first create the structure for these code blocks. We're going to start with try and it's going to have its own scope. We're also going to add catch. However, this is structured a bit differently. Inside its parentheses, we have the error that we can handle. We'll come back to this in a moment. And then we also have finally. Now, what does all of this do? Let's start with try. Inside the try block, you can write the code that may potentially throw an error. If there was an error anywhere inside of this try block, then JavaScript will stop running the code in here and move to the catch block. This is where you have access to the error that was thrown inside the try block. You can essentially handle it however you want. And then the finally block is going to contain code that is always going to run whether there's an error that was thrown or not. Let's go back to our first code example. I'll try console logging a variable here that does not exist. I'll say console log my name. And just to show you where the code stops, I'm going to add another console log just under it saying hello. If we save our file, we're going to see nothing in the console because when the error in here was thrown, the code execution moved into the catch block. So it never even console logged the hello string. Let's move on to actually dealing with this error. Let's just console log this error and see what we get. We're printing the error to the console as a string, which is why it's not in all red. Matter of fact, if I add any code down here, it's still going to run as if there was never any error. This would not be the case if the try and catch block did not exist. So basically inside the catch block, you can handle the error that you received from the try block. If no error was ever thrown inside of this try block, then this catch block would never be executed. Now let's take a look at the finally block. This is pretty straightforward. The code in here is going to run no matter if there is an error thrown inside the try or not. I'll add a console log here saying this will always run. If I save the file, we'll get an initial error as a string in the console, but the finally block is also executed. If I clean up the try block to remove any errors and just say console log hello world, we're going to see in the console hello world. However, no error was ever printed because no error ever even existed in the try block. And as always, the finally block will run if there's an error or not. You can also throw your very own error in the try block. So let's say throw new error and let's say something went wrong. If you save it, you'll see we get access to this error that we threw inside our catch block. If I console log it, we'll see we get an error that says something went wrong. In summary, to throw errors in JavaScript, you can use the throw keyword followed by new error. And to handle errors, you can use the try, catch, and finally blocks. In these blocks, the try block contains the code that may potentially throw an error, 
the catch block contains the code that will handle the error and the finally block contains the code that will always run whether an error is thrown or not.